beloved brothers and sisters, members of this dear New Life Church, all in attendance, our virtual audience, I take this opportunity and I greet you in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Will you wave to the Lord? Hallelujah. Now, when you saw me posting for a moment, it's kind of I was gathering courage because I think I'm already overwhelmed by the service and you must really pray for me that God can give me the composure. I am tempted to make this remark here that of the congregations of the churches in the world, Nairobi New Life comes closest to the worship in heaven. <laughs> because what I've seen happening here, the music, the way it flows, children here who are not only inspiring, but I'm surprised. They have a command of the scriptures. I am actually startled. And uh, really, everything here from the word, the singing, the organization, it points to a great God in heaven. And I pray that one of these days, the grace of God is sufficient that we are all going to be in the heavenly kingdom. Well, I've been here before, but from what I am seeing this morning here, it's like the services are getting better and better, and I think the Holy Spirit is capturing more and more this congregation of this uh, New Life Church, and we praise the name of the Lord. No wonder I met a parent here. When I came here, he wasn't a member. Now he tells me he's more often here. He tells me he has trouble with his children. His children want to worship here. And you see, the Bible says, where your treasure is, your heart will be there. So I think he's forced to worship here. I think these services here have irresistible power. That brings me again to the events that we are having in Nairobi. We have uh, one, two, or three, I'm sure of two, evangelistic campaigns. And if ever there was this irresistible power needed, it is in the evangelistic campaigns. So music, chorist, or director, I don't know who to call you. If you have done it here for the church, out there they need it more. So make a point. I am already inviting you to the campaign I'm sure of, Lenana Motego campaign towards Singong. Make a point of coming and singing there. Make a point of coming and showing what the Lord has done for you. And sure, it's a business where you will never run at a loss. Now, this afternoon, from what has been announced, after the lunch break, we, it is a program that is packed with blessings. Because we have here the Romania team that is here. And uh, I'm sure they will add value to our lifestyles uh, and us becoming healthier. Then, I am going to run... I can't call it exactly an evangelistic seminar because it's meant to be, it was meant to be four hours. If it's one hour, I will do an introduction about something of the kind. Now, why do we need that kind of thing? I want to read the book Evangelism. Evangelism, page 110, paragraph 2. reviving church members. The Lord does not now work to bring many souls into the truth because of the church members who have never been converted. And those who were once converted, but who are backslidden. So when we have an evangelistic campaign at Lenana, the success has a lot to do with the membership. Yes, I know you have picked on speakers, I am going to speak there, but the success is not so much about the speakers, it's about uh, the membership here. Uh, we need to get in touch with God so that uh, we are converted, we are revived, uh, then our ministry is going to have uh, great power. First train church members, still 110 paragraph three. 
first train church members. In a laboring where there are already some in the faith, the minister should at first seek not so much to convert unbelievers as to train the church members for acceptable cooperation. I know the campaign is Lenana. We also have another one, I don't know, at Kebira. There could be another one elsewhere. But the wise council doesn't tell us to start at Lenana. Where does he tell us to start? Church members. Let me repeat the sentence. In laboring, where there are already some in the faith, the minister should at first seek not so much to convert unbelievers as to train the church members for acceptable cooperation. Let him labor for them individually, endeavoring to arouse them to seek for a deeper experience themselves and to work for others. When they are prepared to sustain the minister by their prayers and labors, greater success will attend his efforts. So I'll talk more about this in the afternoon, but maybe I'll read just one more. And then I'll give two or three testimonies. Then I'll delve into the scriptures. Then we will pray. My session starts exactly at two. So by two I'll be here. I'll give some tips about uh, effective evangelism. Then we will pray. Then uh, I will fly over to the other side, Lenana, to launch the evangelistic campaign if the plans uh, that were in place uh, still hold. Now, this one I have read because I am reading this one here because uh, I'm told uh, uh, it is uh, a health week, it is a health Sabbath. So I just want to read something from Christian service here. So as I do that, I am also already giving a seminar about uh, the medical missionary work. So a uh, future reward, not future reward, let me go to the present reward. Are there bonus blessings when we take up the work of God? For those ones who are actively involved, and I know you have been involved by your resources, organization, and whatever, uh, what do we expect when we are involved in that? Christian service, page 200. And, let me start with this one here. One blessing is this, present reward, happiness. Those who engage in the work of saving souls, those who partner with the Lord in one way or other using their gifts and talents in calling people uh, to come to the Lord. I'm reading from Christian Service here, page 269, paragraph 1. Those who engage, those who give their lives to Christ-like ministry, know the meaning of true happiness. In these days when we have a lot of stress, depression, it is becoming the order of the day, there is one remedy, taking the work of God. Their interests and their prayers reach far beyond self. They themselves are growing as they try to help others. They become familiar with the largest plans the most stirring enterprises. The next paragraph. The church that engages successfully in this work is a happy church. If you want a happy church here in Nairobi New Life, make sure you are number one in taking up the gospel commission. Go to all parts of the world, make disciples, baptize them, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Whoever cooperates in that is not only assured of eternal life, eh, but in this present age here, the Bible says, eh, as a church, as an individual, you are going to be full of happiness. 
Uh, the rest I may read in the afternoon, but there is one that I must read now. Blessings. Then there's another one here. Health. So the team from Romania, I'm already giving one health principle. Doing good is an excellent remedy for disease. For those who engage in the work are invited to call upon God and he has pledged himself to answer them. Their soul shall be satisfied in drought and they shall be like watered garden whose waters fail not. So now, I want to give about three testimonies, then I will preach, then the rest will come in the afternoon. Remember, at two, I'm here to give a seminar, and I will give tips about successful evangelism. Now, first testimony, when we were here for the 10 days of prayer, we finished with a night of prayer. Thereafter, I went for an evangelistic campaign in Kitui. Then one lady called me. She told me, she came here, she's not a member of New Life. She came over here, she had three requests. One, she had long prayed for a job, she was jobless. Then two, she was praying for a car. Then now, hardly 10 days after the prayer meeting, she had two appointment letters. And she already had claimed one of the jobs as she was talking to me. About three months later, that was I think March, April. And then you know, she doesn't tell me she had a job. She goes ahead and she tells me, the job is good. Number one, she tells me she has a job. Number two, the job is good. In Kenya, when somebody says the job is good, what are the implications? Eh? What would you be keen more about, the title or the potato? The potato, of course. Then she tells me she got a car. Then the next sentence, it's a good car. Now, I'm not too keen about cars. What do you call a good car? <laughs> Elsewhere, when I went, the next time I went to Eden Springs, they told me it must be a German cool machine. <laughs> and sure enough, the lady visited there. And wow, she had the German cool machine. Before I saw it, the boys had seen it. They came and they told me, we told you it's a German cool machine. But I didn't tell you the third the item. She was also praying for something else. Can you guess what it was? Just guess. Okay, she ge he guesses her husband. She already had a husband. She had gone for five years without a child. In fact, she tells me she was praying for more, more for that than the other two. And she cried the whole night. And she tells me, a few days after the night of prayer, she became ill. And when she visited hospital, she was told it's an illness or blessing. She was expectant. By the time she's coming to Aden Springs a year later, she was carrying the baby. So this afternoon, I'll give a seminar. It's not a secret I'm biased towards prayer. And I'm going to run a brief prayer session. And God is going to answer the prayers. I have already talked with uh, my God. And I'm um, tempted to think it's powerful because, one, the Bible talks about the power of prayer. Two, when do you normally have more people? After lunch or before lunch? If your church is like my church, traditionally there will be less. But you know, Gideon was told to reduce the numbers. So the meeting is going to be very powerful. That's why me, I'm starting do on the dot, 
so that not many people will be back so that we can approach the numbers of Gideon. That one hour, I'm not going to wait. Because you know when you wait, many more people will come. So I start at two, so that there are a few to try and see whether we can approach the Gideon's numbers. Because Gideon was told, eh, don't increase the numbers, reduce the numbers. And when he thought he had reduced, eh, God told him there are still too many. So I don't want too many in the afternoon. But those ones who come, the few, the one or two who make it, I will finish with a prayer session and God will meet us at the point of our needs. Okay? Uh, then the other testimony, it came to my mind when Nimrod told me this is a health Sabbath. A couple of weeks ago, I met a young man, Jeremiah. A while ago, he had looked for me to pray for him just because he developed asthmatic attacks. And daily, I don't know whether they call them intravenous injections, whatever, he was getting that daily to open up the lungs until he got in touch with a medical missionary. The medical missionary uh, had prescriptions of some herbs, but the prescription was more of lifestyle, and she was advised to quit all animal products, eh? and that was the end of injections. Everything, all animal products, I still take an egg and milk, but it brought me to the attention of the statement that eh, the servant of God says, eh, a time will come when they will no longer be safe. Is now okay. Now, how many, how many testimonies did I say I'm doing? Okay, I'm doing the third one. Then after that, I'll delve into the scriptures. Uh, July 2022, I was invited to the United States to conduct a week of prayer. It's not a secret. I'm biased towards prayer. I love praying. And you know, we must go through the embassy for you to be allowed. So I booked. Then they gave me the appointment 2024 July. How many days later? How many days later? Two years later. Then I said, what a joke. And you know, that two years, that's not a guarantee that you are going. It's only to assess you to see whether they can allow you to go. Then I said, this is crazy. An appointment to assess me whether I should go to the U.S. coming, how many days later? Not days, two years later. So I called the pastor, I told him, apparently I cannot make it this year. I don't know whether it's presumption of faith. Pastor told me, make sure by the end of the year you are here. I told him I'm not the embassy. Anyway, I left it at that. I was invited to camp meeting Kakamega, Kakamega Central. I did not want to interfere with the normal running of the uh, camp meeting program. So I introduced a prayer session between six and seven, one hour. The miracle started. I remember namesake, Naftal. She had, he had been bedridden for six years. And he wouldn't come out of bed without support. But the wife that Tuesday morning, when he leaves the prayer, she leaves the prayer meeting, he finds him out of the bed, eh, staggering, but all the same, out of bed without support. That encouraged us. I told him on Sabbath, come and speak so that you encourage the church. I told the wife. The wife told me I cannot speak. My husband is here. He is fully recovered. And that encouraged the church so much. And they organized for a night of prayer. But you know, I'm gifted in, in sleeping. I prevailed on them and I changed it. It became a day of prayer. So, by the way, the power in praying is not in the darkness. The power is in the intensity. So we prayed from 6 
to noon. How much time is that? Six hours. But towards noon, one lady, I still remember her name, then she fell into a vision. And she saw three distinct things in the vision. Now, what is a vision? Okay, what is the difference between a vision and a dream? Let me make it easier. Which one comes when you are sleeping? A dream. So that one wasn't a dream because she was not asleep. It must have been a vision. Now, these were the three distinct things. One, she saw a lot of rain, no more rain falling down. Two, a lot of white rain. The first one was no more rain. Then the second one now was uh, white rain. Later on, she asked me the meaning of the white rain. I said, I'm no interpreter of dreams and visions, but can it be anything else other than the, uh, the blessings of God? I left it at that. Then, the third one was uh, a lot of angels. We had two prayer boxes, and it encouraged us. The angels were directly ascending on the boxes, and they were dealing with uh, our requests. Then to reinforce that, one young man, Victor, I still remember his name, he said, now I have uh, a challenge now. I've been jobless, but now in this come meeting as we end, I have three appointment letters. I don't know which job to take. I said, that's not a big problem. But by the time I'm back from Kakamega to Kisi, what has crossed over? Somebody comes to me and he tells me, Victor, understand he had three jobs. I'm also jobless. Tell him to give me one of the jobs. I said, I'm not sure the employer will be interested in you. So anyway, when I saw the miracles at Kakamega, I told them I also have a need. Can you guess my need? I told them I also have a need. You, I want you to guess. What do you think my need was? Yes, yes. So as I said, I have a need. Somebody shouted in Kiswahili, utapewa. Me, me, I didn't say amen. I said, these are these people who robot cannot know in the embassy. Huh? So I left it at that. I left on Monday. On Sunday, when I'm running a prayer session in Kisi Central, my brother calls me and tells me the embassy has opened up. We booked immediately. We had an appointment in less than a week. I had a very interesting experience at the embassy. So interesting. I don't want to talk about it now. When we come back, that's my one-hour session. I'll talk about it that time when I'm offering the prayers that will open doors. And at that time, I'll tell you what the white rain turned out to me. Of course, finally, I got the uh, visa. But I had a very interesting experience. I don't want to talk about that because now is the time for preaching. I want to preach now. Uh, I will ask that we give silent prayers. Each one of us participates in the silent prayers. Don't yet pray. I want to give you guidelines. First item, I want you to pray for yourself. Pray that God will open your heart to receive the message and the blessings set aside for you this day. Second item, I want you to pray for at least five people in this uh, congregation, including your two immediate neighbors. Then, because we are heading to an evangelistic campaign, I want you to pray for five people who are either not Adventists or the ones who are on their backslidden, and you are praying that God may touch them. Not a long prayer, just say, God, touch so-and-so, work a miracle in brother so-and-so, until they reach the five plus five. Third item, pray for the facilitator. You still remember his name? Say the name. It's Evangelist Naftal Gekonge. When others find Gekonge too long, they even call him Brother G. Just pray that the power of God will rest upon me, that in turn I'm going to be a blessing, because I've come here for that purpose. The, th the, the fourth item, pray against satanic forces and agencies from our midst here, and pray against any other distractions. 
and I want you to pray for the virtual audience as well. Finally, invite the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Do me a quick reminder. First item to pray for? Yourselves. Second item? Five plus five. Third item? Can you point at the man? You are forgotten. Third item? No, it's not. Non-Adventist is still number two. Adventist and non-Adventist, still item number two. Third item? Can you point at him? Yes. Work on this man so that he can also work on you by the word of God. Fourth item? Fourth item? Praying against satanic forces and agencies. And then pray against all forms of distractions. Pray for the PA here. Pray for the technology. And pray for the, on, uh, for the online uh, transmission and the virtual audience. And finally, yes, invite the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I will do a chorus. You don't sing with me. You pray. You can only join me in the chorus when you are through with the prayer items. Let's start. Bwana, Bwana, Uneseke, Unaponzuru wengine, Usine pray together. <clears throat> Mighty, kind, and loving Heavenly Father, once again we glorify 
and we praise your name and we thank you for this great opportunity you have granted us to come before you knowing you are the king of kings source of life joy and wisdom heavenly father forgive us our sins wash us by the blood of thy son sanctify us and make us worthy in your sight in the mighty name of jesus we bind and cast out demonic forces and agencies from our midst break the chains of wickedness in thoughts words and actions set us free touch my lips with coals of fire as you touch those of isaiah put your words in me as you did put unto jeremiah and we pray that let these words penetrate every one of us pour your holy spirit unto us that when you come in the clouds of heaven we will shout and say hallelujah this is the great god and savior we have been waiting for for we ask that in the mighty and blessed name of jesus amen i want you to turn with me to the book of jonah starting chapter 1 verses 1 now the word of the lord came to jonah the son of Amittai, saying arise go to Nineveh that great city and cry out against it for their wickedness has come up before me the word of God came to Nineveh what a privilege that we have the word of God in the word of God is the God speaking to us in the word of God we are to learn our duty from God himself so the word of God came to, Nine to Jonah and he learned his duty unfortunately some duties are pleasant but again we also have unpleasant duties in the word of God which is more pleasant to worship here in new life or to worship in Lenana. So the word of God has both pleasant duties and unpleasant duties. But if it's a duty, we are expected to comply. So Jonah, for Jonah, the word of God came to him and the duty was unmistakable. Go and preach in Nineveh. New life. The word of God has come to you. Go and preach in Lenana. So for Jonah, it was one of those unpleasant duties. So the Bible says, as soon as the word of God comes to him, go and preach in Nineveh, he sets towards another town, Tashish. Notice that all the same he was going. You know, we can be full of activity, but all the same living in disobedience. This man was told to go to Nineveh. He was all the same going, but he was going to Tashish. The Bible says in verse 4, But the Lord set out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Here, God claims responsibility. And you know, the people were afraid. The people had boarded the ship. And they made an appeal to their strong people to make efforts, to row hard, to try and control it. And when that failed, eh, they began now to offload. But as they were trying the best of loading, it was becoming even wilder and wilder. Because it was not an issue of the expertise or of the weight. It was an issue between obedience and disobedience. So when they worked hard, finally they said there must be somebody responsible. In the interest of time, I will not read line after line. But when they cast a vote, the well-known story, it pointed to a man who was asleep. They went to him and questioned him. 
What is it? He told them, yes. You are, you are lot as well on the right person. I am a prophet of God. I was supposed to go to Nineveh. I am running away. They were really afraid. So they said, what do we do? Said, there is only one remedy for you. Get hold of this man, the disobedient prophet. Throw him into the sea. You, with you, you'll be okay. I will remain with my troubles. I'm not sure they knew God. I'm not sure they were Christians, but they were humane. They said, no, we cannot do that. He said, they told a man, again, they are a young man, work hard. Work even harder. How, how can we have the blood of a man on us? They worked harder, but the Bible continues to tell us, uh, in verse 13, uh, nevertheless, the men rode hard to return uh, to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow even more tempestuous, wilder, even more stormy. My message is the cost of disobedience. You see, we often, we often draw consolation when, whenever we are in trouble, we draw consolation from the story of Job. We are assuming we are suffering like Job. Today I want to bring it to your attention. We don't always suffer because we have been perfect like Job. Yes, there are those ones who are suffering because eh, they have lived a life like Job. There are others also who are suffering because they have been disobedient like Jonah. In fact, I want us to do an honest evaluation. Do you think a lot of the trouble we go through is because we have been perfect like Job or we have been disobedient like Jonah? When I do an honest evaluation, a lot of trouble is our own making. If you are going through an experience like Job, you simply have to endure by the grace of God and God, God will bring it to pass. But if you are going through some unpleasant experience as you are seated here, like Jonah, the only remedy is that eh, you undo the disobedience. You comply. So there are experiences as we are seated here, we are going through just because eh, we are going through an experience that God has permitted us to go through, like eh, Job. But many more of us, just because we have been disobedient, like eh, Jonah, but you see now when he went and he was hosted by that ship, he jeopardized the lives of all those who were in the ship. In other words, when you live a life of disobedience, you, de you jeopardize the lives of those around you. It could be your family members. It could be your work associates. I was telling one man, if you are leading a life of disobedience, the department you are working for you could be responsible for bringing retrenchment there in a department in the whole country just because eh, you are a disobedient eh, and you went to hide in that job. It's like now you are sheep. Finally, when they tried their best to no avail, they said, no, God forgive us. They got hold of Jonah, threw him out of the ship, and sure enough, there was unusual calmness. For them now, they were told, it's okay. At least you are not assisting a disobedient you know, prophet. You can proceed with uh, your journey. But you see, Jonah was still disobedient. So he moved from one face of trouble to another, another face of trouble. Is there somebody here who seems to be moving from one face of trouble to another? You finish this one, you go to another one. You finish this one, you go to another one. Often it requires also we do self-examination. We evaluate ourselves. As I told you, as we are seated here, the unpleasant experiences, either you are suffering like Job or you are suffering like eh, Jonah. So for Jonah, as he was thrown into the sea, God ordered a fish and it swallowed him. The horrifying experiences are captured in chapter 2. Chapter 2, the whole of that chapter 
it is a prayer, but a prayer crying to the Lord. Maybe I can just read a few texts there. I will not read the whole of it. Verse 3, For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. It was a terrible experience. But in that terrible experience, Jonah was converted. You know, I have often said, if you don't learn the easy way, God forces you to learn the difficult way. Maybe when your financial world is collapsing, maybe that type of illness that has been pronounced as terminal by the doctor, maybe family and social issues, whatever it is, maybe issues of insecurity, whatever it is, some people never ever have the attention to God until they are going through a horrifying experience. But as soon as he comes to his senses, like the prodigal son, God says, you know, God is a lover, not only of justice, but of mercy. God says, I will not let you suffer the experience anymore. You are already converted. The fish experience has done its work. As soon as he was converted, God again orders the fish and he says, vomit now this man is converted. This man was swallowed and converted. By the time now, he is uh, uh, vomited, uh, is vomited out of the fish, uh, a converted uh, man. There is power in prayer. But especially when we have learned eh, where we have strayed from God and we are making that confession from the Lord, other prayer requests God may delay. But when a sinner comes to his realization or even a church member realizes eh, where he has been living a life of non-compliance with the Lord, eh, that one the Lord does not delay. He works on it eh, immediately. Uh, my parents took me to, in high school, to a school that was uh, competitive because they wanted me to be a medical, a medical doctor. Uh, I have withheld the identity of the institution, but I lost my faith there. And I went very far. I'll not tell you everything. But I remember at one time when I was holding a debate, arguing against the existence of God. I kept doing that until I realized my health was failing, happiness was going, till I found this book here, Health and Happiness. But I've not told you everything. My late pious mother, thank God for that mother, she always held the evening devotions. But my siblings told me there were two devotions. One, the normal family devotion. Then the other one now was to pray for the son that had left the faith. My sister tells me the second one was more of crying to God. They wept. They shed tears. Those prayers converted me. If it wasn't for those prayers, I wouldn't be standing here. Probably you have somebody in the family who has not been very cooperative in the things of God or is totally stubborn. Make a cry to God. But by the gospel commission, we are not only to make a cry for our family members, we are to cry for a perishing world. I just want to read this statement here. Christian service, page 86, paragraph 5. Just before I read it, uh, where is the clerk? I just want to have an idea about the membership of the church. Clerk, raise up your hand. 
Clark is far away. Clark, shout the membership of the church. 7,000. Now, I kept wondering, is it a guarantee that when you have your membership in a church, you also have your membership in the book of heaven? Does it go like that? Now, who wants to be? I'm not even asking whether you are baptized or not. My question is very simple. Who wants to have his name captured in the register where God has for his children in heaven? If you do, raise up your hand. I'll be surprised if you think to answer that. My hand is up. If I can't be a child of God, then what am I going to be? Now listen to this. The world needs missionaries, consecrated home missionaries, and no one will be registered in the books of heaven as a Christian who has not a missionary spirit. You could be in the church here. The church has never discussed you over discipline issues. You don't drink. You are not immoral. You are not a murderer. But you lack the missionary spirit. You are indifferent to the salvation of souls. When you hear we have an event at Lenana where we are going to save souls, you just say, church program, those ones who are concerned can go there, the concerned members. If you find you are like that, you are indifferent to that, you lack the missionary spirit. And if you lack the missionary spirit, your name will never be captured in the register that God has in heaven. By the way, it has an interesting title here, Heaven's Register. What is the name of the clerk here? The name of the clerk? Ezra. So we have now two registers. Ezra's register, and we have Heaven's Register. In Heaven's Register, one qualification, you must have the missionary spirit. You must have that out outreach, that attitude of going out to look for others. So by the time Jonah is swallowed and vomited out of the ship, this man here, he has now a missionary spirit. Chapter 3 again. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, same, same message. Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter to the city from the first day. Then he cried and said, Forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and they put sackcloth from the greatest to the least. Such conversion, such a revival, as we have not seen even in the Christian church. Why? The word of God is a power. But for the word of God to work, first of all, it had to work to the one proclaiming it. If you remember what I read, God does not now work to save souls eh, because many church members eh, are not converted. So in other words, what I'm saying, as we have a series of evangelistic activities, eh, God is asking us, eh, first of all, to cry unto the Lord, to claim the blessings of the Lord, to be converted. And once we are converted, with one hand we are holding on God, with the, one, the other hand we are going to win souls for the Lord. I don't know. Again, I want to ask another question. I'm not even asking who is baptized or who is not baptized. But I want to ask one simple question. Who wishes to go to heaven? If you do, raise up your hand. My hand is up, of course. I want heaven, I want heaven, I want it by all means. Thank God, him, he has raised two hands. It looks like he wants it more than I do. God bless you. But I don't think you can beat me. I am heaven bound, by the way. 
by the grace of the Lord, I have taken Jesus as a personal Savior, and heaven is my home. Now, listen to this here. Last day events. Last day events. Page 282. Starting from paragraph one. On the sea of glass, the 144,000 stood in a perfect square. Some of them had very bright crowns, others not so bright. Our crowns, in terms of the, uh, uh, the glimmer, they will not be the same. Some crowns appeared heavy with stars, while others had but few. All were perfectly satisfied with their crowns. The crown of life will be bright or dim, will glitter with many stars, or be lighted by a few gems in accordance with our own course of action. Now listen to this statement. One more time. Who wishes to be in heaven? Now listen to this statement. There will be no one saved in heaven with a starless crown. Yes, you are in the church of God, you... You sing, you organize, you do many things, eh? you don't drink, you are not immoral. But in the 20 years, 10 years you have been here, nobody has come to the Lord through you. Where the murderers will go, you will go. Where the drunkards will go, you will go. Where the witches, where I come from, they believe witchcraft is one of the greatest sins, so they stone you. Where they go, you will go. Now listen to this. If you enter, there will be some soul in the course of glory that has found an entrance there through your instrumentality. I want to repeat that. There will be no one saved in heaven with a starless crown. You have a crown. If there is no star, you even lose the crown. You will not be in heaven. Now, a star stands for the soul you have saved. The Lenana mission is opportunity for you to save a star. If you enter, there will be some soul in the course of glory that has found an interest there through your instrumentality. Bringing in the shame, bringing in the shame, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the shame, bringing in the shame, bringing in the shame. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the shame. When ye mavuno, when ye mavuno, tuta shangili. When ye mavuno, when ye mavuno, when ye mavuno, tuta shangilea, when ye mavuno, bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep, we shall come. Rejoicing, bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Now, some people are saying we always in church, we sing, we do a lot, but I want to tell you. This beautiful singing here is needed more by the people out there. I've listened. I don't know whether they were youths or ambassadors. By the way, they stole my heart. May God bless you. But more than elder needs that singing. I needed it. It was a blessing. Out there, they are the drunkards. The immoral people. People don't, who don't know their right from their left. The singing will be of much more eh? it will have greater implications there listen to this evangelism page 59 paragraph 3 there are those I don't know where it is
it has gone. Okay. There are those who think it is their duty to preach the truth, but they dare not venture from the shore and they catch no fish. They will choose to go among the churches over and over the same ground. They report a good time, a place and visit, but we look in vain for the souls that are converted to the truth through their instrumentality. Now the Bible, now the spirit of prophecy is telling us about us moving from one church. This time you say I was in Lovington, we had a wonderful time. Nairobi sent to a wonderful time. Parklands a great time. Spirit of prophecy says change the order of things. Begin now thinking about those ones who are outside. Next Sabbath, a music Sabbath, wonderful time. Yes, that is okay. But more than that, eh, we need to go to those ones that do not have the truth as yet. I want to finish with this. Somebody shared this with me just after I preached this message here. Uh, when you see me close the Bible, I'm not reading another verse now. Uh, this man, God blessed him. He had a good job and was climbing the ladder promotion after uh, the ladder promotion after the promotion. Then one time, he got a call that he joins full-time ministry. I avoided saying ministry because, as we have seen, we are all supposed to be missionaries. Without which, your name cannot be in the heavens eh, register. Then, you know, when he was called, he said, no, even here I'm serving God. Eh? I don't drink. I don't smoke. Eh? Besides, I'm returning my tithe. Eh? I am giving my offering. And then he continued with his job. Just then, he had a sick son, the only son. Because he had the money, they visited every reputable institution, health facility, but to no avail. He confided in me, although it was the only son, because now they were taking turns. First half of the night, he takes the, the father takes care of the child. Second half of the night now, the mother, until he said, God, if you allow him to rest, it's still okay now. It's okay with me. That's when it came to his senses. At one time, he had a call. This time he was ready. They called him that time. This time he called them. They asked him, is my position still there? They were excited. He was gifted. He was talented. They sent a truck to go and collect his belongings. What he tells me, the moment he settled in the missionary house, the disease vanished. The illness vanished. Actually, by the time he was telling me the story, his son had just completed baraton. He was seated right there. He told me, I nearly cost the life of my son because of disobedience. He learned his lesson. I pray that by the grace of God, we will evaluate ourselves, we become obedient, and particularly, we obey the gospel commission, without which we cannot be registered in the books of heaven as the children of God. Who says God? Because I want to pray with you now. I don't just want to exist. I do not just want to become a church member. I do not want just my name to be in Ezra's register book. By the grace of God, I want my name to be in heaven's register. I want that missionary spirit to work the miracle. And that miracle, it can only be worked by the miracle that only Jesus I said, I'm not opening the Bible, the other one I will recite. Come, I will wash you. I'll sprinkle water on you. And I will do a very complicated surgery on you. A heart surgery. Remove the stubborn heart and fill you with the Holy Spirit and cause you to obey my statutes. If you are telling God that is your experience, you raise up your hand. I want to pray with you. I will even ask that you stand. Me, I'm already standing. I'm saying, God, have mercy on me. I want you to wash me. Remove the stubbornness in me. Where you want me to go, I will go. Okay? One more time. If you are telling God, I don't just want to be a church member. I want that miracle to work in me. I want you to change me. I obey you. And in particular, the gospel commission to go and preach 
including the Lenana, God wants you there. If you are telling God that, raise up your hand. Okay, hands down. I also want to do a very special prayer. It is possible that as you are standing here, you are once a Christian, you are even baptized, but you know you are backslidden. Or, you have never even been baptized at all. You come, you enjoy church services, you have never been baptized, eh? but today you are telling God, I want you to touch me, I want you to work a miracle. If there is such a person, I will pray for you, you raise up your hand. You were once baptized, but you are backslidden. And you want God to touch you so that you can also join the flock again. Or you have never been baptized at all. Or you are not baptized even in the SDA church. And you want me to pray for you. You raise up your hand. I will pray for you as we do the closing song. So we're going to do the closing song. Then after that I will offer a special prayer. Song number 590. Song 590, Trust and Obey.
or who yeah, because I caught him rejoicing you'll think he's already in heaven I think the Holy Spirit has really worked on him who says for sure I don't just want my name to be in the register of the church I want my name to be in heaven's register and I want that missionary spirit in me you raise up your hand as I, as I pray I have another question who says now I want to participate in this mission, the Lenana mission, and the other mission, you raise up your two hands. Our Father in heaven, for sure, non-compliance has cost us a lot, whether in withholding tithe, whether, Lord, it is uh, uncontrolled temper, but very specifically in, Lord, uh, neglecting the gospel commission oh god we have seen the implications we can only do it at the peril of our souls all these sons that have been raised here touch us again father we have also raised two hands help us the lord we are going to participate by our means by our presence by our gifts and by our talents bless us in every way lord in jesus name we pray amen